Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I am Darren. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to break down these really cheap prime rib roasts that are on sale right around Christmas time every year. This one, I'm going to show you how to break it down into ribeye cap steaks. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. All right, all. Uh, I know I've, I've done some of these videos before, I think last year or the year before, showing you guys how to take these uh, uh, ribeye roasts that are on sale this time a year around Christmas every year. I know that, uh, that I have a couple grocery store chains that actually put these on sale as loss leaders to get you to come in to buy other stuff. So this particular big uh, full ribeye roast was uh, $6.99 a pound through Publix. I bought about four or five of these already and I actually got a pretty good size one here. So I decided I'm gonna show you how to actually butcher this so you can actually separate the spinalis or the uh, uh, ribeye cap steaks and, and kind of process those. Um, I know a while back, I don't know if they do anymore, but I know Costco used to carry them where they actually sold the uh, ribeye cap steaks pinwheeled and tied for uh, I think they were like $20 a pound. So, and what it uh, actually does is it makes you take the uh, spinellus, which is the most tender flavorful part of the ribeye off of the whole ribeye. And then they would cut up the ribeye, the eye part of the ribeye into separate steaks and just sell those as ribeye steaks. So I think they stopped doing that, but I'm gonna show you how you can do that with these cheap roasts. Uh, so I'm gonna get this out of the package and we'll start cutting into it. All right, first of all, guys, you really don't need to see my face for the rest of this. I want to get you a little bit closer up here. Uh, I just opened up this pack, and the way most of your grocery store chains will package these, they already have the uh, twine on them. I'm going to go ahead and remove that because I don't need them. This is a setup to where if you were going to cook this as a whole roast, because what they normally do, see, we'll separate the rib bones and put them back on and that's why they tie tie it back together to hold these rib bones in place and as you can see they just they cut them they stick them back on so in case you want to cook this with the bones on I never do I always keep my rib bones separate and cook them separately so I've got a bunch of these in the freezer already so this will go with those and I'll make a meal out of five or six of these uh, Side, you know, ribs. Uh, these are beef back ribs, they're not short ribs. So, and this is where they come from. So, what that leaves us with is this the rest of this ribeye roast. Get rid of all this, get it out of my way so I can kind of show you how this looks. So, if you get this side view here of the ribeye, this is a ribeye, ribeye rib roast. You can see the parts of the ribeye as it breaks down. This here is the lip section. So whenever you buy a, a ribeye or a whole ribeye and it says with lip on, it's this part here which is mostly fat and it's got a, a thin strip of meat in there. You got your ribeye uh, center here, your ribeye center. And then you got, this is your spinellus right here. Uh, on another side, you'll have a smaller part of the, the ribeye uh, spinalis, but you'll also have the complexus muscle, which is part of the cap section. So it's uh, so what we're going to do is kind of turn this over, and you'll be able to see where there's a seam where your um, ribeye cap kind of starts here. We're going to try to start pulling that away, and you should be able to pull it away with your hands or fingers, or you can just start using your knife you'll see a fat uh, some fat there you can start trimming and it'll kind of start pulling away and you'll see it here once you start pulling you just kind of touch it with your knife and it'll start opening up and you'll see a seam open up now you can trim off some of this other fat if you want to 
Um, a lot of times if you're doing just a whole uh, ribeye and it wasn't trimmed before, you'll have a lot more uh, you know, fat globules on here, but since this was already cut and trimmed and they put the bones back on, you probably won't find a lot of that. So you just keep pulling this apart and that seam will open up. So it gets to a point where you can just start pulling it and you don't need to cut it. But if you start running into where it won't do anything, just kind of cut where the fat is. And that seam will still open up some more. And if you see what I'm showing you here, just kind of keep pulling on it. You just need to just don't cut too deep, just enough to get that to start moving again. And you should be able to just peel it right off. And that's all we're doing is peeling off the spinellus with a ribeye cap. Start rolling it. You see how that's just coming right off. And there's our lip section underneath. Just keep pulling this off. And this here is our pretty much our ribeye fillet. So. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over so you can kind of see all the fat we got on this side. I know I'm going to cut right here where there's no meat. So you can see this is our ribeye cap right here. This is our lip, which is a big chunk of fat and a little bit of meat. I'll try to save some of that meat for um, kebabs and stuff. But you can see it on the other side where that's coming off as well. And you can just cut that right off. And I'll trim off some of that meat and use that for kebabs. And then here is our center section of the ribeye. And we can cut that into ribeye fillets. We're going to trim this up some more. Um, we're going to take this right where the spat is. You can see there's no meat here should be able to just go ahead and trim all that fat section off any big globules of fat you're going to want to trim off try not to take any of the meat if you do don't worry about it but it's very easy to pull this type of fat off you want to pull out any of this uh, connective tissue you're going to want to trim all that, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I'm just going to kind of pull this off. Let me trim off most of this fat, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got a lot of the fat off of here already on the other side. So this here, if you see it, the shiny stuff here, that's connective tissue, and you want to remove that because it's not going to render, and it's going to be really chewy if you leave it on. So I'll show you how to do that. You just kind of want to get underneath it as much as as close to the meat as you can with your knife and then you can just kind of back up pull it up so you can get really tight underneath it and just go all the way to the end and come back to this side and just pull it right off of there you're going to have a little bit of meat on there but don't worry about it you'd rather have that um, connective tissue off of there because it really like I said it's going to be really chewy if you don't and you don't want that with this really tender piece of meat. All right, so that's it. Flip this over. Look on the other side, there's a couple pieces here, but most of this is marbled fat. There's some of that um, connective tissue here and here. And I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to cut this up. We're going to do these into pinwheels and uh, have individual steaks. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, I got this all trimmed up and ready to go. This is the side I want. It's going to be facing out. Um, so I'm going to when I roll this up, we're going to have this be the inside. and. Um, one of the things you can do with these is you can actually stuff them with um, spinach or feta cheese or anything that you want to. If you want to have some kind of 
uh, stuffed steak. This is the uh, ribeye center. And as you can see, it's got a lot of that connective tissue in here and some more chunks of fat. We're going to trim this up um, after this video and just pretty much break it into one and a half inch, two inch steaks and pretty much like a filet. So we're going to trim this up for that. So I'm not going to go over that in this video. So let me get this part done here. I've got my twine. And like I said, we're going to cut these. It's going to be probably a little bit more like a two and a half inch or two inch. So I'm going to go ahead and just pretty much take them just like this because it's going to be about the size of a regular filet mignon would be. I'm just going to cut them just in strips like that. And then what we're going to do is just pretty much roll them up and we're going to tie it and flatten it out. And it's going to be, it's a pinwheel steak and that's what is going to be your ribeye cap. And this is something similar you would see in Costco and how they marketed it there. They cut them up just like this, they pinwheeled them, and tied them up. That's probably a little bit thicker than I wanted because it has this uh, complexus muscle on there. So I might do that one, this next one, a little bit thinner. even if you wanted to uh, before you roll them up if you're going to season these before you freeze them just you could put some salt pepper and garlic in there or whatever you want to season them with and that's pretty much it guys these are pinwheel ribeye cap steaks cut from a bargain prime rib roast from your local grocery store it's really easy to do check it out get the bigger one if you can it works better if you get a bigger size roast than the smaller ones, of course. So even though it might cost a little bit more money, really, you're going to be trimming and, and getting a, a high quality uh, pieces of meat out of this. You know, you're going to be eating off, this was 80 some dollars, and I'll be eating off this for a good five or six times, five or six meals out of it. So, Well, here's the finished products, guys. I took one piece of butcher twine for each of the pinwheels and just tied a regular butcher's knot to hold them together. Then I cut the uh, center section into little fillets here, about an inch and a half, two inches thick. And then we got some trim for ground beef, sausage, or what have you, kebabs, and then the ribs. So check it out, guys. Really easy to break these down. I buy a bunch of these when they go on sale. So make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and I'll see you on the next Fire & Water cooking video.